This is about the important things, about how to be a good person, how to get along, and all of that, but also about government, and it's particularly well suited to the times we're in, yes, right now. But it originates back in 1939. Most of the kids read a book called Fair Play by Monroe Leaf. The author and I have at least one thing in common, University of Maryland. I want to read the book to you, go through all of the illustrations, and as I do so, you'll probably think it's dumb and simple. But remember, this is your first primer, as it were, on what's going on out there and what you needed to learn to become real, real wise. Fair Play a book by Monroe Leaf. If there were only one person in the whole United States, and that one person were you, or you, there would not be any doctors or teachers, firemen or policemen, builders or miners, farmers or clothes makers, milkmen or movie stars, senators or soldiers, nurses or presidents, and there wouldn't be any houses or bridges, theaters or radios, trains or letters, parks, newspapers, stoves or automobiles, schools or libraries, stores or ships, airplanes or factories, churches or hospitals. There would just be you or you and a lot of wild animals, and I don't think you would have much fun. But you are not the only person in the United States. There are about 160 million more of us here, so we have people of all kinds who do all sorts of different things to get along together. And if we want to live together pleasantly with other people, we can't do everything just the way we would if we were alone. 160 million people, all doing only just what they felt like doing, would make an awful mess, and no one would be happy. So we have rules, and we have laws, and we have government. And the best rules and laws and government are those that most of us decide are the best ones for us to obey. That is the best way for a country to be run. If there were ten children, and they all wanted to play a game together someplace, and they picked the place to play, and nine of them decided to play a game there with a ball, but just one of them named Just Me didn't want to play ball, but wanted to fly a kite there all by himself, what would they do? Well, if they had any sense... Nine of them would go ahead and play their ball game there, and they would make just me go off and fly his kite somewhere else. They wouldn't just sit around having no fun and doing nothing just to watch him take their place for himself alone. If when they finished playing, they all wanted a drink of water at the drinking fountain, there would be two ways for them to get a drink. One would be the way just me would try with everybody shoving and pushing to be first and nobody getting a good drink for a long time and maybe somebody getting hurt. Or they could make a rule that they form a line and take turns quickly. That way everyone would get a good drink and it wouldn't take one half as long as the crazy way and nobody would get hurt. If another time they wanted to read for fun, and they went to the library, and each took a book and sat down quietly, they could have a good time. But if just me decided that he felt like talking and shouting, nobody could read at all. Somebody would have to come and put just me out of the library so the others could read and enjoy themselves. You can't talk and shout in a reading room. That is a rule that makes it easy for people to do what they go there for, to read. Those rules were made so that most people could enjoy themselves and have the most fun. Some more rules are made to protect us from people who don't care about anyone but themselves. Those are called laws. If you had a bicycle, 
and you were just about to go for a ride, and a just me who was much bigger and stronger than you came up and said, Give me that bicycle. You, all by yourself, could not stop his taking it away from you. But you are not all by yourself. Most of the people in our country have decided that what we own is ours, and nobody can take it away from us just because they are stronger and bigger than we are. And a lot of people together could tell any just me, no matter how big he was, that he could not have your bicycle, because it did not belong to him. It belonged to you. That is the law. What belongs to you can't be taken by somebody else. But it would take a lot of time and a lot of work for everybody to watch just me's and stop them every time they tried to do something they shouldn't do. So we have policemen to do that. Policemen are men that we have to see that all people obey the laws and rules that most of us think are best ones for us to follow. A policeman doesn't just tell people what he thinks they should do. The policeman's job is to see that nobody selfishly does anything that most of us have decided is wrong and will hurt somebody or make them unhappy. If you woke up one day and you didn't feel well, and had spots on you, your mother or father would send for the doctor. And if he came and found out that you had the measles, he would put you to bed and try to help you get well. But he wouldn't let you go to school or out to play with other children, because if he did, they too might get the measles. He would make you stay at home until you were well, all well and safe again. You probably wouldn't want to give anyone else the measles, but if you were selfish and didn't care whether you did or not, then all the other people who lived near you would decide that you ought to stay home whether you wanted to or not. And then, if you tried to go out and give other people the measles, they would send a policeman to make you stay home. It is a law that you can't go around trying to give other people the measles. You wouldn't want somebody to give you the measles, would you? Another sort of selfish just me that policemen watch out for is the kind that drives an automobile so fast or carelessly that he or she is likely to hurt or kill somebody. Most people have decided that automobiles should go at just certain speeds and no faster, and they have decided that they should stop for red lights and follow other rules, so we have made laws about how to drive automobiles so that no one will be hurt. Some selfish people don't pay any attention to those laws. They drive too fast and they don't stop for red lights and they might run into us and hurt or kill us at any time. They are not obeying the laws and we have policemen to stop them when they drive that way. If somebody owns a house and lives in it, he does not have to let other people go into it unless he wants them to. Just anybody who feels like it can't walk right into any place he wants to. Suppose that you were lying in your bedroom at night, and anybody who felt like walking in there could do so. You would have a hard time getting to sleep. So it is a law that nobody can walk into other people's houses unless those people want him to. There are many more laws than these that we've read about so far, but you can now see why we have rules and laws. We have them so that everyone gets a fair chance and no one selfish person can make the rest of us sick or unhappy or hurt us. Next, let's see who makes the laws and how all the 160 million people who live in the United States decide how they are going to live together. That is called government. As soon as you're old enough, you can go to school in this country, and when you have spent about eight years in school, you are ready for high school, or one like it. There you can learn some more for another four years, and then after that, you may go to work or to college and learn still more. And when you are 21 years old, whether you are a man or a woman, you have just as much right as anyone else in the whole country to help make the laws by which we rule ourselves. If we are wise and unselfish, and are not too lazy about them, those laws that we help to make can be good ones. And by the time that you are 21 years old, you will probably be ready to work in some way to get the money to pay for your food and clothes and a place to live. And there are many, many different ways that people work, but no matter what they do, as long as they behave themselves and stay out of jail, 
They have a right to help run the country, and this is how they do it. They vote. Farmers and teachers, doctors and nurses, businessmen, storekeepers, ditch diggers, cooks, lawyers, policemen, housekeepers and firemen, everybody has a chance to vote. That means they have a chance to choose what they want. And what most of us choose is what all of us must follow. That is the only fair way. We have two different kinds of choosing or voting. Sometimes we are asked which law we would rather have, like this. All the schools should be closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Or all schools should be closed on Sundays and Wednesdays. If you had to choose one of those, which would you choose? Hmm? If all the people where you live were going to decide this question, they would go on a certain day to the voting place. These places are called the polls and each person would have a chance to make his or her choice. Inside a little closed place where nobody else could see, there would be a slip of paper like this. Now this piece of paper is called a ballot, and when you have made your choice and marked with an X the law you want, you have voted. And after the voting was all over, they would count the ballots, and if more people wanted schools closed on Sundays and Saturdays than wanted them closed on Sundays and Wednesdays, then they would be closed on Saturdays and Sundays. That is the fair way to decide. That is one kind of voting. The other kind of voting is for a person whom you want to do things. Every two or three or four years, the people in each state in our country decide who they want to be their governor. That is the man or woman who is supposed to see that the state is run the way most people in it want it to be run. And sometimes he or she is allowed to make rules and special laws for those people all by himself or herself. So it is a very wise thing to be careful to pick a good, wise, and honest man or woman to be the governor of your state. And when the day comes to vote for the governor, everybody who is 21 years old or older in that state should go to a poll or voting place and vote for the man or woman that he or she thinks will be the best one. And again, there will be a ballot. And after everyone who goes to vote has made a choice, the ballots are counted and the man or woman who has had the most people choose him or her is voted to be the governor. We say that he or she was elected because when we vote for a person, not a law, that voting is called an election. Every fourth year, we vote for the person we want to hold the most important office in the whole country, the President of the United States. He can do a lot of good for all of us if we choose a wise and unselfish man, so you can see why it's very important for all of us to vote when we are having an election of a president. There are many other men or women we vote for to be senators or representatives in Congress or mayors of cities, and they all make some of our laws that we don't make ourselves but we do decide which people we want to make those laws. So when we vote, we should be careful to choose good men or women. One of the worst things that we can do when we are grown up is to be too lazy to vote. Because if we don't help pick the laws we want, or the people we want to make the laws, we have no right at all to be angry if we don't have the kind we like. So we should really help to choose the laws and the people we want to make them. And there is one other very important thing to remember if we want our country to be the best run country in the world. That is, if the law we wanted or the person we wanted is not the one most people wanted, we must be fair and obey the laws and help the people who got the most votes. That is fair play. Most of the people who live in our country were born here, but not all of us. Some people come from other countries and after they have been there for a while, they find that this is where they would rather live than anywhere else. Those who do that have to stay here for two years before they can ask to become citizens. Then they have to behave themselves and learn to read and write our language and learn about our laws and obey them for five years. And after that, they are just the same as the rest of us and have just as much right to help run our government as the people who were born here. They too are Americans. All the people in this country, except the Indians, either came here from some other country 
or their mothers and fathers did, or their grandmothers and grandfathers did, or their great-great-grandmothers or great-great-grandfathers did. Because when the first people came, Indians were the only men and women who lived here. Did you ever stop to think that all of us, when we grow up, work for each other? Most of us don't wait to grow up before we work for somebody. Do you work for somebody now? Do you ever wipe dishes or cut the grass or water the lawn or feed the chickens or carry the groceries? Well, that is work. All of us don't do the same kind of work. Farmers don't raise animals and vegetables just for themselves and shoemakers don't make shoes just for themselves and builders don't build houses just for themselves. Doctors don't help just themselves to get well. Suppose you wanted to ask a friend of yours to come and visit you, and he lived a thousand miles away. How would you ask him? You could walk all the thousand miles, or you could do something a lot easier. You could send him a letter. All you would have to do is put a stamp on it and drop it in the letter box, and in a very short time your friend would have it. Well, it wouldn't get there all by itself. And many, many people would work to see that your friend got the letter. A man would take it out of the box and to the post office. And there other men and women would look at the address of your friend and put it in the right bag to go to the right place. And that bag would be put on a train or a boat or an airplane by people and carried to another post office where men and women would open it and give the letter to a postman who would take it right to the house of your friend. Maybe more than a hundred people would be working just to carry that letter from you to your friend. Do you know who pays all those people who work and do that work? We all do. We pay taxes. Taxes are money that we pay to the government so that the government can pay people to do things for all of us. Here are some of the people who work for all of us and get paid with the money from taxes. Firemen. Firemen work for all of us. They wouldn't say, oh, no, we won't save Mr. Jones' house or we won't save Mrs. Smith's store because we don't like them. They would go and try to put out a fire in your house or mine or anybody's place that caught on fire. Policemen. Policemen work for all of us, too. They are supposed to protect us and the things that we own from people who would like to do us harm. They are paid to see that everybody obeys the laws, not just some people. Soldiers and sailors are paid with taxes, and their work is to protect us if the people of some other country try to do us harm. There are all kinds of inspectors who protect us in ways that we often forget about. There are inspectors who see that bridges are built the right way so they won't fall down. Inspectors watch all the houses and buildings to see that they are made strong and won't come crashing down on us. Inspectors see that the cows that we get milk from are clean and healthy. Inspectors see that the people who cook the food we eat in restaurants keep clean and healthy while they're working. There are thousands of inspectors of all sorts who take care that are not put in danger through somebody else's carelessness. And inspectors are paid with taxes. Teachers and ambulance drivers from hospitals. Nurses. Lifesavers in the Coast Guard. Forest keepers who watch out for forest fires. Trash collectors and street cleaners. Men and women who give advice and help to farmers and fishermen and factory workers. Mailmen. Zookeepers and the people who plant and take care of our parks. All of those people, and many others, work for all of us and get paid with the money we all pay to the government in taxes. By the way, I said the people who take care of our parks work for all of us. Public parks, from the smallest ones to the big national parks like the beautiful Yellowstone Park and Yosemite Park, really belong to all of us to enjoy. When you see the sign in a public park, this sign, do you know why it is there? People don't put signs like that up just to keep you or any other one person off. They are put up because we all own the park and we can enjoy it if the grass and flowers are allowed to grow. Just one person walking on the grass probably wouldn't kill it, but if one person is allowed to walk on that grass, everybody should be allowed to, and very soon 
we would ruin all the grass that really belongs to all of us altogether. Now, every one of us pays taxes to the government. Sometimes we hardly know it. If you buy a tennis racket, or a pack of cards, or a camera, or some chewing gum, part of the money that you pay for it goes to the government for taxes. The more money we have, and the more money we make, the more we have to pay. In our country, some people have more money than other people have, but there is no law that says that any one of us can't make more if we try. There are some selfish people who have a lot of money and don't try to help other people. And there are other selfish people who don't have much money and would like to take away the money of other people for themselves, but they wouldn't like it if somebody else took theirs. Both kinds are selfish, and both kinds are bad Americans. Our country is not perfect, and the way we run it is not perfect, but most of us think it is still the country in which we want to live, and we can all make it still better. No other country has a better way to run than we do. We give every man and woman an equal right to help make our laws and so to run this country. We give every man and woman a chance to make as much money as he or she honestly can, and we all have to obey the same laws. If we all tried to keep from being selfish and were willing to help others as much as we could, that would be fair play and we would all be even happier than we are now. The two people who have done the most for our country ever since it began were different in one way, but alike in most important ways. One was born very rich, and one was born very poor, but they both worked hard for all of us, and were strong, kind, and unselfish. They both tried to make this a better and happier country for everyone. One was George Washington, and the other was Abraham Lincoln. Now next we'll talk about ten people who will not make good Americans. A thief is bad at any age in any country. People who steal cannot be trusted and have to be watched all the time. None of us likes a thief, whether it's a boy stealing a pie or someone who steals our taxes. A liar is just about as bad as a thief. If you can't believe a person and tell whether he's telling the truth or not, how can you ever get along together well at all? This liar is saying that he hasn't seen his little sister's doll. Do you believe him? A bully is a stupid person who thinks he has a right to do anything to anybody just because he is bigger and stronger. Nobody wants to live with him. This is a greedy, and the reason it looks like a pig is because it acts like one. It is selfish and never shares anything with anyone. If we all were greedy and never helped anyone else, this world wouldn't be any fun to live in for any of us. This is a lazy, and it is no good to anyone. Every time there is work to do or even fun to be had, it is just too lazy to join in. Lazies are no good to anyone, not even themselves. This is a won't help, won't play, won't work with anybody. Almost uh, a won't. It isn't lazy, but it doesn't like to do things with other people unless they will always do them the way it wants to. We can get along very well without it. This simple-minded creature doesn't mean any harm, but it goes around spreading germs all over the place. It coughs and sneezes in people's faces. And if it had the whooping cough or chicken pox or any other disease, it would give it to everybody it met. This is a flighty that is never willing to do anything but play. It's foolish and never willing to do its share of the work. If we were all like that, we would starve. This one never agrees with anybody. It says, no, that is the wrong way to do everything. But it never, never has even an idea about what would be a good way to do it. It is no help at all, and just interferes with the rest of us. This is a stubborn. Whether it knows that you are right and it is wrong, or that everybody else is doing the right thing, it is just plain not going to join in anything because it just doesn't feel like it. The End